friends. Uh, we need to be patient and help each other out. And um, if there is something that um, you really feel needs to be fixed for other people who might come to the hotel with a disability, I suggest, you know, writing a letter, um, informing the hotel of, of what's going on and how they can um, help it out and fix it. Um, they need your yes. feedback as well, right? Yes, oh, definitely, because, you know, the. No one's perfect. No operation is perfect. You know, un unfortunately, like I said a little while ago, even with best your best efforts, sometimes you do fall a little short. And and hotels and 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 managers, I mean, they're they they can make errors too, right? Because we're all human. And I'll give an example of of what I, what happened uh, to me as a general manager. In fact, it was at the same hotel that you know, D. Roos and I had worked together. Um, and and she didn't know this, so I mentioned to her this a uh, couple of days ago when we were talking prior to this show. Um, I was a general manager at the Sportsman's Lodge Hotel and um, the Sportsman's Lodge was built in the, in the 60s, okay? So it didn't take into a, a account, you know, you know, people with disabilities, especially if you had a, say, a wheelchair and things like that. Um, so when you walk through the front desk, there were steps that you had to go down to get to the front desk. Um, well, in lieu of, I guess, maybe changing everything in the lobby, what they did was they put a phone, we call it a house phone, outside under the portico share or the main entrance of the hotel. So anybody could walk up to the front, walk up to that. Anyone that needed assistance could just walk up and pick up the phone. The phone would have a direct dial to the front desk and the person would pick it up and say, okay, I need assistance with checking in. Okay. And then they would, you know, that would direct them to come out and, you know, get information from you and, and kind of direct you to where you can come into the hotel or enter the hotel. Well, what I found out through someone that was trying to utilize it, that the phone didn't work. So, and it was not, for whatever reason, it wasn't on our checklist. It wasn't on my checklist. I didn't check it. And I was just as at fault as everyone else there. I mean, I take, you know, uh, all the responsibility for that as being the general manager, um, that the phone didn't work. Okay, so someone that had a disability needed to, they needed assistance, and we fell short on that. And as a result, the hotel, you know, we we got in trouble for that. We got uh, there's a lawsuit, and um, we had to settle with it. We end up the hotel ended up settling for a, a good amount of money because we didn't have that. And that those are things that hotels need to take. I mean, I'm speaking from experience right now, so. Um, and like I said, I fell short of that. And, you know, from that point on, we, first of all, we had to make sure we made sure that uh, phone worked. Uh, we made sure everyone was trained on what to do if that phone did ring and someone did answer and someone did need a, assistance. Um, but, you know, it came at a hefty price for, for us because we fell short on that. So moving forward, you know, for hotels, like I said, I speak from experience. This has happened to me. And it's important that hotels do everything they can to make sure that these things don't happen to anyone else. Uh, if that means we have to walk our property and we have to envision ourselves as, you know, as ha having a disability and what that person would have to go through to get to this point, right? So those are the things that after that, we made sure, I made sure that those things, you know, were in place. And then even from, from that hotel, when I went to my last hotel, we made sure that things were, um, you know, in place and because now I have a heightened awareness of it. Right. Um, right. so, so, you know, it, all it takes is one experience for, you know, and hopefully that person learns from it. And then, because I've been to 14 different hotels, right. So it's important that the things that I learn in hotel one go all the way to hotel 14. Right. So whatever those things are, you know, your good managers will remember that and will apply it to the next hotel that they go to, or make sure they're, people or their staff are trained on what to look for and, and some of the obstacles that can be there for people, you know, with disabilities. That's a good point. That's, that's, that's really good. It's really important to check equipment if, before um, your guests come in with a disability and make sure, you know, that they, that things are in check and, and operating correctly because it's frightening 
product, you have something that's not working and you're like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Because you, you're not mobile. So um, that's a very, very good point. And I want to talk a little bit about what to do if, you're, um, if you, your room is not ready, if, if they don't have a room for you. Um, and, and you're a person with a disability. First of all, when you register as a person with a disability, the hotel takes that room out of inventory. You know, those are the, because you reserved it with a credit card. <laughs> you have to reserve a guarantee with a credit card. But when you come in and if um, for some reason that hotel room is not there and you reserved it, they should be giving you an option in the area already that you can go to that that um, has an accessible room for you and also um, people might not know out there that the um the accessible rooms are the last to be sold um and i just wanted to point out that the hotel should have other arrangements for you um nearby because you were, you're supposed to have a room when you came in. So what are your thoughts on that, Russell? Well, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, um, if you make the reservation and you let the, the hotel know that these are your requirements or these are some of the things that you need um, and you pay for that room, meaning you put your credit card down, I mean, they're guaranteeing that you're getting that room and the room that you requested. So, and if, if they fall short of that, there should be uh, alternate accommodations made at a hotel nearby that can that would be suffice for you or that would be sufficient for you so uh yeah so the the responsibility now is on is on that hotel to make sure they give you what you're looking for now um i you know i've been in situations before as a guest you know as a guest at a hotel because now i'm a consultant right so i travel throughout the the u.s you know and i you know i'm in hotels all the time now and one thing, and you may mention that those, those rooms should be sold last, the rooms with the, you know, uh, that are handicap, handicap accessible rooms should be sold last. But I've been in situations where I've been given those rooms, right? And I'm like, well, why am I getting this room, you know, when they should be holding that for someone else? So I'll go back to the front desk and say, hey, the, the room you gave me is an accessible room. I don't need the accessible room. I mean, you need to hold this for someone that is going to need it. Well, um, that's the room that we have available for you. You know, I mean, it's, it's now I'm getting into a, a discussion or not an argument, but it could, if, depending on how I am, if I don't pack my patients, it can be an argument. It can end up being an argument, right? So, yeah. you know, sometimes I say, well, okay, this is not the right person to talk to. If the manager is not there, then I have to wait until the manager comes. And then have, and explain that, you know, you should be doing this. Okay. Although I'm with a group, right? I was with a group and for whatever reason, they ended up giving me a room like that, but they had to block that room to give me. They didn't just, you know, just arbitrarily pick that room. It was in the block and they, they had reserved me in this particular room. Um, like I said, and I didn't, I didn't request that, but um, I think one time I did end up talking to a manager and, and just kind of explaining, you know, why you shouldn't well the room that i received and why i should never have received that room i didn't request it and i, I said you need to you know hold those rooms just in case you know that should be your last sale if you will and the hotel wasn't sold out so because i asked those questions as well um and you know he, he kind of he appreciated me but he uh, you know is sometimes it's, it's hard to get through to certain people uh, you know managers or whatever if you're trying to if I'm an outside person trying to tell someone within the hotel, um, you know, what they should be doing, you know, I'm just trying to suggest, okay, you know, in the future, you should probably do it this way. You know what I mean? So, but as long as I get my, you know, my voice heard, I think that's important because it'd be one thing if I just did, you know, if I just said, you know what, okay, this is the room I got, you know, the heck with it and kept it going. Cause I don't know what happens in their operation later that night. Right. It, and it could be affected later that night when someone checks in and they re reserved a room and now they don't have that room available. So I would rather raise a stink and say, hey, give me another room 
and save this one till later than than not. Okay, that be, but that comes from me being a hotel in the hotel for you know almost thirty years and being a consultant now and understanding the big picture, not just the small picture, just getting this person out of my sight and giving him the room, but right. the big picture. You know, give him another room because we may we have to anticipate that someone that's actually going to need that particular room, right? So, so yeah, so, but no, that's, those are good points. And, and like I said, I now have a heightened awareness and I definitely not afraid to say, hey, you know what, uh, this is not the room that I requested and you should hold this room for someone that actually needs it. Let's talk about your consulting for a moment, Russell of Hotels. Now, I know that you take, um, work with event planners, you work with hotels to um, have them connect when they need meeting and events. You know, you get the brand of hotel and you connect it with the event planner or the meeting planner uh -huh. or the corporation. And you also um, help with marketing in this digital age and help them um, promote their brand. So you also do that. And um, you go around to different hotels and you, you have a stay there so that you can tell other people about the hotel. If they are needed, then you will connect them. So also, um, tell me a little bit about that. And um, have you had um, events where people are disabled and they might need to, you might investigate um, a hotel that would be accessible for them? Has that That's a good in? question. Those are all great questions. Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for recognizing my company. I do, I do appreciate that and some of the things I do. And you're spot on. You know exactly everything that I do, Donna. So, you know, I, I appreciate you. So, yeah, I do plan meetings um, for companies and organizations or even individuals uh, within the hotel, within hotels. So my job is to, is called, I call it hotel site selection. So I assist the meeting planners of that particular company or organization with doing the legwork of finding the hotel, right? So, you know, based on, it could be based on a geographical location. It can be based on a destination. It can be based on a proximity to somewhere, uh, based on size. So it just, it's a, it's a different, couple of different, you know, categories that they ask me. To, and it could be based on price. So my job is to scout out those hotels in that particular destination. Let's just say it's Los Angeles. So, and they want to be downtown. So my job is to look at downtown properties and um, send out an RFP, a request for proposal, send that to the hotels. The hotels uh, respond to that directly back to me. And I compiled all the information with the rates and all those specific things that the, that the, the meeting planner is looking for. And then I give that back to my client. Um, so in, in regards to, uh, have I ever booked anything with, um, and, you know, been asked about, you know, um, you know, make sure there's rooms or space for, with people with disability. No, I have not uh, specifically, but I would, that's a, an extra question that I always ask because sometimes the meeting planner doesn't know all their attendees and they're not aware if they may have, you know, certain, you know, disabilities or anything like that. But I make sure that I do ask those questions just in case they need that. Because like I said, I come from a place where, you know, we had to do that or we should have done that. Um, so like I said, I, I, I mentioned this again, I have a heightened awareness of that. So I make sure that, you know, um, it's easy, if, especially if I have, if it's, a, if, it's a, if it's a hotel where I can go into, meaning sometimes, these hotels, are, they, they could be in the same city or they may be in other cities. And, and I don't do site inspections at every hotel. So I, just, I did a group in the summer that was in Florida. Now, I was not able to go to Florida. So I had to rely on the staff to tell me the layout of that hotel, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm able to go myself, then, of course, I'm going to look and see. I'm going to follow the path from guest rooms to the meeting rooms to see how easy or how difficult it could be for somebody that may have a disability to get there. Um, and I always wanna make sure that the hotels are not grand hotels, meaning they're not huge. They're not like the, like let's say the Westin Bonavich or downtown, which is 1300 right. rooms 
100,000 square feet of meeting, of meeting space. That's a huge footprint, right? And it can be, it's hard for anyone to, to maneuver some of the, the places getting around that hotel. So let alone someone with a disability. So I have to make sure that I'm cognizant of that fact just in case it does come up, but it has not come up where, you know, um, they're asking for, for a specific thing. But during my career and as a sales manager, I remember um, hosting, a ho uh, hosting a group at my hotel. Um, this group was from Gallaudet University, which is a university in, in um, Washington, D.C., where um, I think 100% of their students are hearing impaired. So we had to take into account those things. And that's when I found out about the, the hearing impaired kits that hotels have to have, because we had to order a, a bunch of those. We had to order, I think I had like 50 people that were hearing impaired, right, at least. And I had to order at least 50 of those. We had to have those on, on hand. We had to test them to make sure they worked. We had to install them. So we had rooms, the rooms that were blocked out, we had to make sure that those things were installed and that they were working. And being a salesperson, normally you would just rely on, okay, engineering or front desk to take care of it, right? The front office or front desk staff to take care of it. But because I had never done it before, I wanted to be involved in it. I wanted to see how it all worked because I had a client, right? So the client wants to know what the steps were. So I wanted to make sure not rely on my engineer to tell me and or so the front office manager to tell me. No, I wanted um, firsthand information that, okay, this is how we set it up. This is, and it, they work and this is how they work. And whatever the, the steps were or whatever the results of the steps were, I wanted to be able to communicate that to my client. And I was able to do that. And the, the meeting went out without a hitch. I mean, it was great. Everything worked out really well. Uh, but it, that was because I applied myself. I made sure I became the expert at that time on what was going on. And it's the same thing that I do now as a, a hotel site selection person on the other side, make sure that, you know, clients that do need, if they do ask, I've already taken the steps to, to ensure that if, if there's a client that does have a disability, uh, identify what that is and make sure that, you know, those things are taken care of. That's great. And I just want to um, say one thing that um, there's a site called wheelchairtravel.org. It's got a lot of information that might be helpful for those listeners here. Um, also, when you mentioned uh, about the, the rooms, there is a chart there that tells you how many rooms the hotel has, how many rooms should be for, um, the, uh, should have kits in them for um, hearing and um, blind. And they tell you how many rooms should have roll-in shower, how many should have tubs with um, the grab bars. So there's a specific number of rooms with a specific hotel account for you know the different um requirements for disability so i want to take a little break again now and then we're going to wrap it up with russell my good friend and um we're going to ask him to give us his uh social media handles so we can get in touch with him um so give me a second and uh we'll be right back don't go away 